Ambazonians. Ambazonians. Erika Todonto say we must do this on Ayabacho. Look, Ayabacho is the work with the Republic. And Ayabacho na he plan me the key General Ivo. Look, I know I'm a General Ivo reveal the evil things. He also talk again, say, IG must to change people there for inside that their government. For some of this struggle, I can find. He talk, say, Akwanga must to apologize for kidnapping the priest. Akwanga. Basically, and uh, let's bring everybody on board. We'll start talking on you have at least um, uh, half of a thousand uh, people watching or probably a thousand or more. So we need everybody on board because this message is very important. Today we're talking about transforming our revolution, identifying the enemies as the only way uh, to secure Seseko's release from the dodgers in Konengi. want to thank you all very much, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you know, it's a great pleasure that we are doing this show on the eve of Christmas. So I invite everybody to share to extensively to everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you all for listening to that beautiful piece from uh, uh, Batenico, uh, Titus Sikwa Yoktabe Julius. And I uh, want to thank you, uh, Yannick Sikot, for coming back after a lot of uh, family issues. And, uh, you know, uh, we're happy to have you back. And, uh, you know, your platform is one of those platforms of truth. Uh, so we bless you all, ladies and gentlemen, and Merry Christmas. So we want to invite everybody who's watching at this time that the momentum is high, the strategy is steady, and everything is in place to ensure that we uh, deliver Southern Cameroons a free country. But definitely, there are some ugly truths that will always be told as far as this revolution is concerned. And as you are all aware, we are fighting a war that was declared upon us by Mr. Paul Bia Bim Vondo, the criminal and dictatorial uh, president of the Republic of Cameroon. And of course, we also have some of his uh, cohorts 
who have, of course, unleashed on diluted suffering on our people, shooting and killing people. As you are aware, as we are talking at this moment, they are burning houses in uh, Ekona. They have burned quite a number of houses. We also getting information now that uh, some uh, military men are actually in my uh, 16, uh, getting into houses and stuff like that, and also part of my 14. We have also had information about what is happening in Ndu, how the military has shot and killed a mentally challenged man. I just got his name as a, a brain star or something. I'm going to follow up on that. So we are following up very closely on all those things that are happening in our territory on the eve of uh, Christmas. It's supposed to be a special day for people. We have also uh, spoken with some of the generals on the ground, like General Nambere and the others in the corner and other parts of Southern Cameroons. And uh, there was a little bit of confusion about the issue of uh, ghost towns on Christmas Day. But uh, we have solicited with them to understand the plight of our people, that it is necessary for people to celebrate Christmas. As you are aware, the grand fighters uh, have the command to, and uh, we will always come to a consensus to try to discuss with them and put reason out there for them to understand the necessity of some of the uh, unnecessary actions. And, um, you know, so we have discussed, I uh, just got a phone with some of the generals and uh, a number and the rest, they think that people should enjoy Christmas, but the fighters in Ekona are very angry, especially after the one of their generals uh, was killed and after the uh, lot of the nonsense that the military is doing. And they say that, okay, for the other parts of Fako, they can probably enjoy Christmas, but in Ekona, there will be ghost town and stuff like that. Those are some of the special dimensions that fighters can take. And so uh, we are happy that uh, all of these things are falling in place. However, uh, I must tell ladies and gentlemen that we are very concerned with um, the exact strategies that will push us to independence. Uh, as you are all aware, we're going to have independence, but we don't want to delay too much in having the independence, taking a longer time that is going to inflict more pain on our people and kill a lot of our people and give us a kind of period victory. So it is on this note that uh, it will take uh, the special grace of God and uh, to empower some of us activists with the wisdom to talk to you because this is your platform and uh, this is exactly some of the things that we want to hope that will have everybody uh you know concerned to have an opinion and have a say in whatever we say and um, because you are all you all understand that we have some of our compatriots who have been seriously compromised uh we must obviously let all of you understand this, the, the, the stand of this platform. And uh, we are very dynamic. Each time we see that people are coming to their senses, we'll always come back to let them know that they can always have a hand from us. But as it stands, it is very clear that what must be said must be said. And uh, you have to trust in uh, the wisdom that God is going to speak out to you today. You have to trust in everything we do. Uh, because it is uh, necessary for us to create an atmosphere of trust. And uh, that is the reason why we have remained consistent on the gold. And uh, we have not also failed in propagating uh, the exactitude and the magnitude of the importance, or should I say relevance, of our revolution. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you wholeheartedly that uh, the one reason why uh, a lot of us would want to assume that uh, the Paul BI is having a lot of pressure, apart from the numerous human rights violations, is because uh, they are holding some of our compatriots in jails, and also, especially because they are holding our president, Siseko Ayuk Tabe Julius, the president, the legitimate president of uh, the Federal Republic of Ambazonia. And uh, I want to tell you one thing very vividly, and uh, I would say all of this, and I will take an extension to the General Ivo saga that some people have continuously want to create, uh, 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 you know, some kind of confusion about a lot of things that are going on as far as the death of this brave soldier is concerned. And we want to be very clear with you, and to be very clear, and you have to get the point very straight. You see, anybody who is uh, who is an enemy to the interim government that has been left behind by Seseko Ayok Tabe Chilios is not supposed to mention Seseko's name on his live, live show. He's not supposed to maintain Seseko's name on his platform. This is because uh, Seseko Ayok Tabe Chilios, uh, you must understand that there are things that we cannot see on social media because of the position he is and where he finds himself in. But you must understand that Seseko's blessing are on the interim government irrespective of who is president. And I want to tell you all Southern Cameroonians authoritatively that 
except we begin to accept the hypocrisy and the gigantic conspiracy theories of some of the criminals or criminal contractors of la republic du cameroon who call themselves ambazonians we will not have gone anywhere and uh, let me tell you once more that there is no disunity amongst us it is just a semblance of disunity that has been perpetrated by some of the accomplices the of power bia that, that, that have been planted in our midst and I must tell you very sincerely, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, this game has changed. And uh, most often, I do not want to say I, I want to say we. We are going to be transforming this revolution come from the 10th of January, should Seseko not be released from jail. And this is a promise that I have for the government of uh, Mr. Probia. And I want to also give my extension to let the international community understand this intention. You know... A lot of people, I'm going to come, you know, chronologically to talking about those who are hypocritic about Seseko's being detained. And you all know them. I'm going to call their names here. And I'm going to also use this platform to forbid them from mentioning the name of that gentleman who has put this revolution uh, above his personal being. And I want to tell you all, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who are out there in the other areas in the diaspora, if you think you don't want to support this revolution because you assume that some people have given you the idea that there is this unity, then you have to think twice. This is a time to identify contractors working for Mr. Pobia and who are trying to stop you from funding the revolution. And of course, to also identify who are the truth, the truth speakers, the seekers of truth in this revolution and you support and endorse their ideologies. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I want to be clear with you. I want to be very clear with you and I want this to be anybody who's joining you share extensively. I want to say it and I place my life on this, that we are not going to lose this war. We will never, ever going to lose this war. Trust me. Now, there is something that is going on. A lot of people have expressed concern about the resumption of schools and we are very strict on this point. And we want the international community to know. I've spoken to Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, and many journalists and senators around the world. And my point is straight. I use the word, I use the pronoun my, because it is now my opinion on this. And I hope most of you are going to buy it. My point is straight on the resumption of school. We Southern Cameroonians who are concerned with the security of their children, brothers and sisters going to school, we are not against school resumption, but we are against the carnage and barbarism of the uh, uh, government of Mr. Pobia, who has ensured that they stay on a shooting spree, killing people. Now, if you are a true Southern Cameroonian, you cannot and will never allow your children to go to school based on the fact that the international community has failed. We want to be thankful to the United States of America that has given a lot of pressure to Mr. Pobia, but also want to hold the UN, the AU, and other Francophonie and the Commonwealth and other organizations responsible for ensuring that they allow Pobia to stop schools. Now, we are saying that there will be no schools because of the huge insecurity that is in our regions. We will not allow, I cannot allow my children to go to school because, so I'm just saying this because generally we're going to ensure that we further shut down all the schools until the United Nations brings a peacekeeping mission and cause Mr. Pobia to demilitarize Southern Cameroons and take away his soldiers to the other side of the Mongo, release our president and come for discussion. Now, let us be clear with everybody that it is not our fault. If the United States, Great Britain, France, and other diplomatic missions can send out pure and straightforward communiques saying clean and clear that there is insecurity and that the citizens should not go out there, we will not also allow our children to go to school. From the universities to any part of Southern Cameroon, we are going to enforce the shutting down of schools, especially in Kumba, where we hear only Kas Kumba and Government Balingo High School or whatsoever is still oppressional. Because we are talking about insecurity. Take for example, will you ask somebody to go to school in a corner? No, that is not the point because people have been killed every day by the soldiers. So that point I want to make clear. Now I want to move to other extensive issues. Mr. Pobia, I want you to understand one thing. And I want to pledge this to every Southern Cameroonian who will be watching me at this time. And listen, you have just seen, for those who are posting that something happened in Bamoon, that place is not Bamoon, it's Bangoren. Bamoon is a clown, like Bayangi, like Bakosi. So we want to seize the opportunity to urge activists, we have seen it on their walls, they call it Bamoon. It is Bangoren, it is in the known division of the West region. 
So I'm just trying to make all of this so that let them understand what we're saying. So if you have something that you want to post on social media, do not listen to because you have an, a video where the people were saying that Bamun and you said is Bamun. No, that is Bangoren and Bamun is not a village. Bamun is a tribe, it's a clan. Like you have Bayangi, Bakwiri. You cannot say Bakwiri village. There is Boya, which is in Bakwiri. So that one I have to make clear and I want to only say that for those of you who have watched it, you have seen what has happened in Bangoren. We cannot take responsibility, but those are boys who are angry for reasons that I've explained. And we want to tell Mr. Bia that on the 10th of January, we understand I have been tipped that in Pobia's 31st December speech, he might release more people. Listen to this live video. He might release more people. And like you're already aware, Seseko's release has already been signed, but Pobia is still playing politics. Now, let this be clear to everybody. Let it be clear to everybody who cares to listen. After the 10th of January, I want the Betty Asomos, the Churumas, and the rest to listen very attentively. They shouldn't say they were not warned. After the 10th of January, if Seseko is not released, I will officially activate ATM. Now, let it be clear. Paul Bia does not have, the international community is staying quiet. And Paul Bia has continuously, after signing or a decree, pronouncing a fake disarmament commission, they have continuously burned down our villages. No fighter in Southern Cameroon stays in any village. There are where there are somewhere where we cannot describe. But if you go to continuously burn the people's villages, then be rest assured that the revolution will be transformed come the 10th or afterwards the 10th of this uh, of january 2019 why am i saying this i want to be categorical i want to be clear on this particular fact because a lot of people will want to think that this is a joke from the 10th of january should cese could not be released everything is already in place from douala to yaoundé to ebolova to bafusam to all the other regions of french cameroon we will flatten french cameroon listen to me very attentively we will flatten French Cameroon. If one house is burnt in any part of Ambazonia, we are also going to burn 20 or more houses. This is a fact. I'm saying it on camera, and I want the United States, I want any government in the world to take note of this. Because you people cannot stay quiet, and you think that when Southern Cameroonians will also start reacting, and you come and say this is violence. For those who care to know, I am not afraid, and I want to say this on live video, I'm not afraid to go to jail, whether in the United States or anywhere, for fighting for freedom. And I have read this nonsense from one Scott Morgan, a journalist who is around here, and people are using it to frighten people. Let me tell you something. The, the last man that will be afraid of something that the United States government is doing this to do. Listen, and they continuously put out fake news out there. Let us be clear. Let us be very, very clear with this. America is aware that there is war in Southern Cameroon. And as activists, we have the responsibility to ensure that we give our people the courage. You cannot discourage me from talking on, on this social on this social media or social medium because you think that if we stay quiet, our people will be discouraged. Let me be clear. You can write two billion and one articles, put it on CNN, BBC or wherever, trying to fight in activists, calling them sponsors of terrorists and all of those stuff. It doesn't work. And let me be clear with you. We want to be very clear with all of you out there that you have to think of another strategy to shut some of us down. Mr. Paul Bia, I have told you, and we're going to tell you repeatedly, that come the 10th of January, should Seseko not be released, Yaoundé will flatten, Douala will be flattened, Bafusan will be flattened, Gandere, that is when you will know that the real war has started. There is every legality to take the war across to the enemy's camp. We cannot and we will not allow any government to challenge our territorial integrity and we stay as though we are fools. We have been too patient, too, too docile for so long. And we're going to tell Mr. Pobia that enough is enough. ATM has been activated and come the 10th of January, Mr. Pobia, you will hear from us. You will not see nobody, but you will see things going down. And that is going to be the beginning of your end. We want to be clear. It is not difficult for us to get into that unity palace and do what we want to do to Pobia. But we want him to stay and see exactly what we are going to do. As a matter of fact, ladies and gentlemen, put your trust in the strategy. Put your trust that this young man does not say the things that he doesn't do. 
If I say tent, it means that everything is already in place. And it might take a little longer, but we are strategizing to ensure that La Republic feels the highest pain ever from the start of this revolution. I want you to trust the fact that it is going to be unusual business and La Republic will understand that you cannot keep us in bondage for too long. For every one house that will be burnt down in Southern Cameroon, we're going to burn 20 in La Republic du Cameroon. This is not a joke. And the international community should better ask Pobia to pull out his troops. Because if France, Britain, USA is doing already great, we see the, U the UN Security Council is doing already great, but should they not put a peacekeeping mission in Southern Cameroon between now and the end of January, let me let them know that we, as some of us are ready to go to jail for any reason, whatever motive they bring, we don't care anymore because they cannot continuously kill our people and you hope that we're going to stay quiet. It is never going to be the case because that is going to be game over for Paul Bia come the 10th of January. Should Seseko not be released, I, Eric Tato, is going to flatten Yaoundé. We are going to flatten Yaoundé. Flatten Duala. Listen, it's a simple strategy. Everything is in place and we are giving Paul Bia just the 10th of January to surrender, release our president, remove his troop from Southern Cameroon. Else, listen, we can do the, the even the airport we brought down. I want anybody who is traveling to Cameroon, of course, Cameroon, they know that they have been banned, but other planes flying from other parts of the world coming, they should be aware that we are not going to joke with these promises. We cannot have our people being killed every day. I've received pictures, images every day, every time they are killing people, and the international community sits quiet. Yaoundé will be flattened, Douala will be flattened. A Bolova will be flattened. A Betu will be flattened. From 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 Eseka to Bomnyebe to anywhere to Sang Malima to just anywhere in 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 La Republic of Cameroon, we already have the strategy and everything is strategic and we are going to implement it come the 10th of January. It's a deadline and if Paul Bia does not remove his soldiers from Southern Cameroon, does not release Sisiko. And, of course, if the international community does not put a UN peacekeeping mission in Southern Cameroon, we will ensure that schools will also close down in the Republic of Cameroon. We will ensure... Let me, let me tell you something. For me, Eric Tato, I'm not doing this thing for, for, for popularity. I'm doing it because I have the concern of Ambazonian people. And that's why I'm not scared of the things I say. I take responsibility for everything I say. And I'm not... Listen, I have told my family... And I've told many people, my friends, who care to, who care. A lot of them, they have been dreaming that, oh, we saw you in Cameroon, you have been repatriated. That is not a business. That is not a business. If you choose to do whatever to Eric Tato today, that's their business. But Southern Cameroon will come one day to sue this country for mishandling a, a freedom fighter, if at all the U.S. can ever do. By the way, just so that you know, the United States is not into this business of some illegality. It's a country of law, and that is why we respect it. But let's be clear. I've told many people, and I still want to, I still want to repeat it very clearly. There are two things that can happen to me now. One, they can kill me, or two, jail me. Unfortunately, I'm not afraid of those two things because I already know them. If I'm jailed, I'm not. I don't bother. If I'm killed, I'll, I, I, I am God, and I'm gone, and I'm sure that God is going to take care of my family or whosoever. Now, let us be clear with this. We have the strategy, and I'm just letting you know because it will happen, and it must happen. When it happens, just publish that it has happened. We'll stay and we'll watch. Now, I want to come to the most crucial part of this presentation. The most crucial part of this presentation, for those of you who are listening, is the fact that I want to vehemently cancel the idea in your mind that we have infighting. There is no infighting in Southern Cameroons. We don't have any frontline leaders fighting. We only have people who have been hired by Paul Bia to make the international community think we are fighting. We are not fighting. Today, I want all of you to listen very attentively. The one man, the one man that has kept us on the heels of this fight is in jail. It's Seseko Ayoktabe Jesus. And that one man, I must tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that man is the one man that La Republic of Cameroon is scared the most. And we must say it and say it the way it is. Now, if you claim that you are calling Seseko's name on your live shows, you claim that you are fighting for Seseko, will you be fighting for me 
and destroy my farm? That's the question I ask you. Will you be fighting for me and destroy my farm? The answer, of course, is no. And let me let me let you know one thing. I'm just going to pull up a couple of things here on my phone. And I told somebody yesterday a lot of things. You know, I have I have watched and I, I've, I've seen a couple of them trying to bring my name into their mouth and trying to use, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> they, 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 they are, they are conspiracy theories to actually uh, try to draw my name in their, in their mess of killing their own general. Let me be clear with all of you. And I want this to be a clear lesson to anybody who cares to listen. Yannick Sikot, you're an activist. Joshua Carr, Mark Barita, Ashu Kingsley, Kemi Ashu, all of you, by now, every activist should understand where we stand. And you should know what exactly to do. And uh, I have continuously extended my concern about the restructuring of the interim government. And I uh, see that the government is very reluctant, it's sluggish, let me not put reluctant, it's sluggish in doing that. But let me now state these particular points clearly to any leader who calls himself, who cares to call himself a leader. This is the point. The first thing is that we don't have no infighting. The IG is Siseko's IG is our IG. And that is what gives us the strength. And I want to let you people know that contrary to what a lot of you think is because some of you want us to say some things that will implicate our leaders in jail. The leader and the father, the mentor of self-defense is never Ayaba or Akwanga. I want these two people to get me clearly today that the fathers of self-defense is neither Akwanga or Ayaba. And all these people whose pride and egos have won peacock feathers should understand that we are not going to deal with their excesses anymore. I know I have received screenshots that some some people in the ADF or AGC who still care about me that have sent to me all your plans in the a a a ADF. I know what people have done with my account, hacking my Facebook page. I know how much you hope that you can take Tato down. In fact, to you, you should kill Eric Tato even before the Republic kills him. After all, you are a contractor of the Republic to come home. Let me be clear with all of you who are watching me at this time that I told one of the AGC surrogates that as Eric Tato, I have built a watertight credibility and reputation in this revolution that is going to take him the, to employ the resources of France, Britain, China, and many more countries to dis destroy my reputation. Let me be clear with you all. The father of self-defense, like some of you go out there and make noise because you don't know nothing that is happening. You know, there are people, I, yesterday I blamed some activists. There are people who don't talk. But who act now the first battle the first time a policeman or gendarme with was killed four of them in number who remembers the place anybody who remembers to write and let me explain to you why i am saying i know who is the father of self-defense can you write do you remember the first place the where the what caused paul Bia to declare war on southern cameroons after they have killed our people and also reacted do you know the first battle? Do you know the first place? The first battle of the Southern Cameroon's war. Who knows it? Let me give us 30 seconds to see people who write. The first battle. Thank you very much. Substant man has written the exact answer. So I don't want to waste any more time. Somebody say Manfe. Yes, Manfe, but not exactly. Kumbu wrong. Now, the first battle was in Kembon. That is the right answer that Substant man has written. Not a Mojok. Joshua Ka, yes. A Mojok is... Kembong is under a mojok, I understand. Man face, so all of you who are within that those areas, you are close, you're correct. But the exact place is Kembong. That is the exact place where the first battle was fought, where four gendarmes were killed. Now, the people who did that job, did you hear that they said daddy was a, a was a drama, it was a film that I have acted? The first battle was fought in Kembong. That is where four gendarmes were killed on that fateful day that Paul Bia came and declared war. Now, let me be clear with all of you. Did you hear those people who fought and killed those gendarmes? Did you hear them say they were ADF? No, they were not. Now, we don't want to say more than that, but we all know the father of self-defense. The father of self-defense is in jail. 
and we will not call the name because we don't want to give any reason for that republic to implicate anybody. So those who don't know, let it be very clear that Kembon, the war started in Manu, in Kembon precisely, and this should give you a message. So let's forget all these hypocrites who come on social media, who are not aware of what is happening. They come and they are claiming that they are father of this, father of that. Yesterday, I listened to Cho Ayaba's speech, and I want to say it because some of you knew that I was going to come and react to it. And I want to say that, as I said yesterday, I was very, you know, I was reluctant. But after listening to Cho's, Cho Ayaba's speech, I want to tell all of you Southern Cameroonians that the devil that we have in this revolution, the traitor that we have in this revolution, the problem that we have in this revolution is Cho Ayaba. And I want to say it authoritatively because, as you are aware, I am one person who has extended a hand to everybody and I've talked good about every leader hoping that these guys will change. Now, we, our problem is Cho Ayaba. And for all of you AGC soldiers who care, let me let you know one thing. My name is Eric Tato. And we will not condole the, the likes of Cho Ayaba, the mother of our fighters, who comes here and says that oh, he has never ordered for a fighter to be killed. Look at how devilish and pretentious that man was yesterday. And some of you see activists to condemn him. You fell, you, you, you fell, you fell so badly for that propaganda that Cho did. Now, Cho Ayaba said a couple of things in his life show that I want to analyze and put all those of you who can be brainwashed in one straight line. Number one, I start with the death of General Ivo. Generally, when, when I go, let me first of all start with the incident in Batibo. When the incident in Batibo happened, I was in uh, Chicago and people were forwarding to me a part of my video, an old video many months ago that was kept out. And then they were saying that that too happened, should not be true. I have a doing because that's what I was saying concerning Sumoli. I have never ever said something that I'm not sure of. When something happened, about with Sumoli and the rest in the Kona area, Moyoka, I came clearly and I said it was not Cho Ayaba. And the Cho Ayaba surrogates were very happy and they were using my videos all over. Why did I not accuse Cho Ayaba? No, because I did my investigation and I was sure that he was not responsible and I came out to defend him because that is the role of a truth speaker. You must be speaking the truth at any time. Now, while I was in Chicago, Everybody was out there. Cho Ayaba and his gang, they went and kept that same video and they put it out there, distributed on WhatsApp groups, saying that Eric Tato has said that it's not Cho Ayaba that killed people in, uh, in Guzan. Now, in the Guzan affair, General Biebia was arrested. And we just stayed us quiet. They shot and arrested him. But yesterday, Cho Ayaba officially told the world that General Biebia has been killed. How did he know? Because he ordered for the killing of General Biebia. Now, for those of you who are agencies and you think that this issue is about Cho and all of this. I'm, I'm talking with the AGC fighters on the gang or ADF, the few fighters that are there, for them to realize. Today, at 1, uh, uh, 1 a.m. U.S. time, I was up. They called me that they have seen General Efang, the general that I have just appointed somewhere in Moliko. I immediately wrote to Walter Skayaka, called him in the night. I called them together, informed Efang that they are tracking him. A general is going somewhere. They have already reported his location. Let me be clear with all of you. And I've spoken to all these generals that if we don't remove Cho from this revolution, Cho is the devil that, you know, you know how the devil speaks. Look at Cho. He has the capacity to convince you people. And some of you, after you listen to him, I cannot fall prey to Cho anymore because Cho is a thief. He's a criminal. I'm going to say it anytime, any day. I have videos I can play here. You hear Cho Ayaba used uh, 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 Pan Jumba to raise funds when Pa was in prison and he Consume all that money with his family and never send a dime to that power. We have people in this revolution that we must watch out for. And I'm saying it, all of you ADF, after this, go to your walls and put my name. I saw how you took a screenshot that I commented on that Don Pasho's war before my apology. And then you put it out there trying to say, oh, Eric Tato killed General Ivo. Let me tell you something. If I, if, if I wanted to kill General Ivo, I will not kill him. I will arrest him, do a video. And if I'm killing him, I'll kill him on live video so that you see. So don't bring a good boy, General Ivo that a lot of you, including your so-called spokesman that you have, you have naturally sacked, uh, Tapang that you have sacked naturally, or a lot of you do not even know who was General Ivo, including the top members of the AGC. They don't even know General Ivo was a military man. I'm the person who brought that history here. Even if you listen to the AGC person, uh, uh, Benedict uh, Kuo, or they call him what, who read something about General Ivo, he did not, he could not even mention the fact that Ivo was a B, because he's not still sure. Because you don't even know Ivo came, committed his life to fight for the people of Ambazonia. But what happened? Ayaba Cho and his gang, they, 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 they brainwash him and try to turn him against the population. Let me be clear with all of you.
and be clear with all of you. All this uh, Samuel Kilo manual, all these AGF fake profiles. If you know that you are strong, come with your face. Show me your face where you are coming from. I'm not poor behind that you are afraid. I'm an activist using social media like you. Show me your face and then tell me that every time I'm the one who is saying it. Come live, come and tell, talk to me. I'll stop on Instagram and call my name. Let me deal with you squarely. Only using social media. I'll not use anything. Let me tell you. If you know that you're a person, don't use... What do you think? You use a fake profile. You stay there. You're making noise. You have. I don't have a gun. I have only Facebook like you. I leave my page open for you to comment. And then you come here. You attend that. This, every title of this. Show me a real face. Let me tell you. So some of you think that... Let me tell you one thing. You have cut my videos. Put it out there. Send it to FBI. You have done every single thing to sabotage this man. But I told one of your surrogates yesterday that you to sabotage Eric Tato, it will take you all the resources that America has. Even if you bring Bill Clinton, Barack Obama put together, they will not sabotage Eric Tato. I have built my credibility and it's going to stay like that. Let me be clear with you. If you want to talk as a fake profile, show me your real face. After all, what, what happened? You come here, you, you can comment. You go to Ayabacho's wall, can you comment? You probably have only positive comments because you have blocked people who can give you, I will not block nobody who can give you the real opinions that matter. Let me be clear with you. For those of you who care to know, AD, ADF, you killed General Ivo. That is why you get four different versions of General Ivo's death. Number one, when Ivo died, Ayabacho was the first person to post. Let me show you. Do you know what time I received uh, the, the, the news about General Ivo's death? It was about 2 a.m. here. 2 a.m. that I received. I just take while I was looking at them. The story that I've given you in my last live show about General Ivo with a girl, that's the authentic story. Any other story, whether that they sent to go and take money, I don't know about that one, but what killed him is that they set him up with that girl and then they called the bills. They came and they killed Ivo. Now, Ayabacho runs out there as usual. Ayabacho comes and says that Ivo was killed in battle. Ivo was never killed in battle. That's the first lie that Ayabacho said, that Ivo was killed in battle. Tabang Ivo comes and says a different thing. Tabang Ivo comes against and says that Ivo was killed by his own soldiers. Benedict Kwa, who is supposed to be chairman of the ADF, or whatever they call themselves, he comes and says that Ivo was killed because he was probably going to solve the Guzang problem, then he was in secret, whatever happened. Four different versions. We are still investigating. You are still investigating something that your CIC has come and said that he died in battle. What other investigation? You people should apologize to Ivo's family for killing that young man. All of you of the ADF, you people should apologize. Because what you have done, God will never forgive all of you, the so-called criminals of the AGC and ADF. I know you are looking for me, but if you have to come, ask your friend who lives not too far from me, Waters Kiyaka, he has my address. I'm waiting for any ADF person, any time. If you want to come, come very well. La Republic has tried. They have tried. Who is AD, what is ADF? A gang of thieves? Criminals who want to destroy this revolution? Let me be clear with all of you. If you want to talk as a fake profile, show me your face. Do a live video saying, my name is this. Me, I come from Kendem. I can give you my village, everything, details about me as I talk. Show me your own face. Let's investigate you. Let me teach you a bitter lesson that you'll never pass on Facebook. No, let us be serious. You kill your own fighter. You give four different versions. Ayabacho comes on live show. He says that uh, he does not want to talk because, you know, he likes to take his time. Ayabacho, you were going to talk until my, my live show disrupted you. I put that live show at 1.30. Yeah, almost 2 o'clock. You do not come. Ivo came and got that. You have been called for a meeting with a European, uh, 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 European president. Can you brief us on the meeting? The same way Capo lied that you, you, you went to sell oil in London. Capo said you went for, 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 for a diplomatic mission. You said you were in an interview with the uh, New York Times. Today, your interview has not come out. Let me tell you something, fellow Southern Cameroonians. I want to be clear with you. If you want to support the revolution because you need to trust the circle, this is the time. We'll hold Dr. Sako accountable to give us all accounts of what has been going on and for him to reshuffle that government and give us a very good and straightforward government. And we forget about this Ayaba and his gang of thieves because Ayaba came on live yesterday. He says he doesn't rush to talk. But when Pan Dangan said something about Ayaba, it did not take Ayaba 10 minutes. He already did an audio and he saw it we putting it all over. Ayaba, you don't talk, but you use, you use so many fake profiles. You go left, right, you write this, you do this. Let me tell you something, Cho. I want to challenge you. If I like, I'll remove a series of videos from tomorrow that you have been doing terrible things, taking money from people, but I just want to keep it for the sake of this revolution. But let me let you know that if you have, you have not if you, you've taken money from the Republic, if you want to come back to Southern Cameroon, come back and explain to us what you have done with the money, apologize to the people, and then we'll begin to think where to take you back. If you go and take my, my screenshots, that is because every title is strong. So you go and take my screenshots, 
and then you think that you can use them against me, you put it on your walls, you give all these petty activists that are never known by Yaoundé. Who knows them in Yaoundé? All these small criminals who are there somewhere in Europe, the other one is here in America, is the vagabond moving up and down, all of them. You start knowing some people want to destroy our revolution. And some people come and say that <laughs> we are divided. We are not divided. I want to tell you that we are not divided. We are going to support this IGU. Once Dr. Sako will reshuffle this IG, some of us will put a lot of money there because that is where we trust. That's the Seko's IG. And we hope in the days that is going to make a statement to still endorse this IG. Ayabacho, it's a shame to you, a very big shame to you. When you come online, you are calling Seseko's name. When Seseko was in the dungeons, when Seseko was in the dungeons for more than how many months, did you call Seseko's name? When they ask you that you come and give a statement about Seseko, you say, who, who gave the IG legitimacy? You will not talk. Today, you come here, you are trying to play as though you like Seseko. Hey, they took away Seseko. They took away Tassan. You should be ashamed of yourself, this young thief in Norway. You think that because you, you, you come and you talk, those who believe you, they really, they really love what to do. Ladies and gentlemen, trust me, I'm led by God to say this. We will not and we will never ever have anything to do with Cho Ayaba. If he doesn't come out clearly and define his intention in this revolution, I apologize to the people. I see my brother Mark, you are out there, you wrote an article. I'm a very straight man. I respect Mark Barita, but he has to apologize to the Ambarian people for coming and trying to justify stuff with Ayabacho. You said they don't, we don't have proof that Ayabacho killed General Ivo that oh, he has betrayed the revolution or he has taken money. Do you know what they call circumstantial evidence is? Do you know what they call circumstantial evidence? Ayaba killed fighters in Batibo, Mark and the rest. He has not apologized for what happened in Batibo. You came and condemned it. Yet, you go out there, you go and begin to try to defend Ayaba. I saw even my brother Akosin. Akosin was going, he was writing, Ayaba has made a great speech and he's talking about democracy in a WhatsApp group. What democracy about sharing Ayaba's speech when Ayaba's not even allowed to comment on his speech? Let me tell you something. The time has come when all of you have to change. If you think, listen, think twice. Nobody, no one person is ever gonna stop this revolution. We don't depend on Ayaba Cho for anything because Ayaba Cho is corrupted, he's compromised. And for those of you who don't know, take it from me. You all, when I started talking about Tapang, this is how I was talking about Tapang, but I still came and gave him a hand of fellowship. If Ayaba can have the greatest thief as his spokesperson, the one that has stolen, you see how controversial Tapang is. Ayaba is talking about conspiracy theories. Who is the highest employer of conspiracy theories and fake profiles? When we did an online poll, during when we we're trying to know who, who are we going to vote, Sako or Ayaba, what happened? Ayaba and Tapang and the rest, they created 1,500 or 600 fake profiles and voted for Ayaba. That is the kind of person who does not want to comment on this war. Yet, they come out there and they think that, let me be clear with you, AGC, you are personal non writer in this revolution. And I am going to do every live show after Ayaba to counteract all the lies that you come and say. The better, the earlier he stays quiet, the better. And all these fake profiles, I've given you one simple way for you to get relevant. Use your face and talk. Use your face and talk to me so that I will know that you're a man. Uh, listen, I have, I, what did I say? I told you people that, I've told people that from the 10th of January, it's going to take, maybe it can take a while, but you see what will happen in La Republic of Cameroon. From the 10th of January, it can take a while, but you see. Do you know why I am the first Southern Cameroonian who published the issues in Bangoran? Even some of you who are writing, you're calling Fumban or Fumbot or you're calling in the Bamun. You do not even know the place. You simply follow what we wrote. You know why we have that, that story first? That should begin to tell you some things. Let me tell people something. Come the 10th of January, you people will know. If there's, if we want to do anything, anytime, anywhere, we know how we control these things and we're going to make things happen. We don't want to say everything on social media, but I want to tell you that, Cho, stay quiet. You are not doing anything to help Ambazonia. The earlier you go out of this revolution, the better. When Cho has gone so down, so downcasted after killing Ivo, killing everybody in Batibo, killing more of our fighters, Cho comes and says that he has never asked any fighter to kill a, 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 another fighter. But yet, the same Cho said that he's going to crush anybody and that the dominant force will get to Boya. The dominant who? Are you going to show your dominance with the Republic? Even your criminal and, and banditry spokesperson, the court tapang, the criminal, he comes and says that he's going to crush everybody. That what has happened in Batibo, they will do the same thing in, 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 in Boyo. And you come and you say that, oh no, you probably never killed somebody. Cho, Go and say those things to different people. I know. I know that all these are ADF people. They think that me, Eric Tato, ask, go and ask Rex Matondo in Manfi, ask other people in Manu, Ebison Ben, and the rest. 
I don't drink poison. Eight times. Eight times. What don't give me? Eight times. And he drinks, so I'm not saying poison that I drink. If I don't die from poison, I don't die from acid, I don't die from gunshot, I don't die from nothing, I die only when God says I will die. Man, make a very clear. So, anybody can come at me for make sure someone do something. Make ask and I'll tell you. I need gunshot, he kill me. Knife, he kill me. Acid, he kill me. Poison, he kill me. Anybody no one know that me know today. So, if you can't come at me, in fact, I don't drink poison if I man die. So, if not, they ever think any time in a lifetime that you want to do something from from wherever, whether it's like the public or anywhere, they send you to come here. When I meet the early tattoo, and if you if you want to try, invite me, give me mimbo, put poison, I go drink them, you see them for your face, I come back, I can't I can do the live show, they go the one that the campus will be. So let us be clear with all of you people. Let us be clear. Please, I have a did not kiss Smolly and Godfather. That one is a lie. But Batibo, he knows 200 percent what happened, and uh, General Ivo, he knows what happened. So we don't want I don't want to mix facts. So all of you, this surrogates of the AGC, whatever I want to do, you have to think twice. So for those of you who are listening to my voice at this time, let it be clear with you that there is no division. And the only time that you understand what Ayaba is trying to do is when we, 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 must have, we must have gone so down, except you take my word as a point of caution, that number one, Ayaba wants to ensure that he discourages the, the diaspora from contributing because he is not also having money since county by county has come. Two, Dr. Sako, start inside your IG, reform your IG, reform your IG, reform your IG before the fifth of January, bring in key players and make a, a, a treasury that is transparent and give us detailed account. If every week we have contributed money, tell us how much we, how much we have contributed. Let people see it, put a statement out. They don't tell me anything that they don't want government to know how much we have contributed. At the end of the day, you still came and told them my trip to about 700,000. Now, you have taken money, you gave money to the Yunfu Funchas and the rest. What happened? They took that money, they had today the Yunfu Funchas. I heard somewhere that uh, what the Yunfu Sango and so Funchas, I heard somewhere that they are running their mouth that they want to take us to court with a bell if we don't produce receipt. Yunfu, I want to tell you one thing. You cannot sue me any court in the world, not even the head. You understand? Because you are a criminal. I will still repeat to you that you have eaten. A man took $18,000 and gave a fighter 25,000 25, uh, 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 francs. That's $50. So you can begin to imagine what these guys have done. So for us to be able to go through, forget about Ayaba, forget about him and contribute. The only way that you will succeed to kill Ayaba and the plan of Mr. Pobia is telling them that you cannot discourage us to contribute. Diaspora, if all of you let the IG create a very clean and transparent account, bring good auditors there. Some of us actually can be putting our eyes in those accounts. Let them give us a let when people put money. Let us see what's happening. And when you take money that you're going to buy sugarcane or granite, make sure that we see it the way the poor of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Mezam. They raised money, their boys bought sugarcane and granite, and we have seen it on the video. We cannot put it there. We have seen it on video. So all of you must stay calm, ladies and gentlemen, and trust in the strategy that we are winning this fight. The IG is rotten and must be restructured. I've used the word rotten. When it's restructured by January 5th, we'll come and endorse it and ensure that we contribute our, our widow's bite to that particular IG of Sisiko. That is the only way. Listen, very attentively. That is the only way to solve this issue and to get Sisiko released when the IG is strong. Now, for all those of you who are writing my trip to Boya, can you tell me how much you contributed? Can you tell me how much you have ever contributed? Even in any small, any small uh, 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 organization, any small county, can you tell me how much you have ever contributed? Let us be clear. Can you tell me how much you have ever contributed? Even all these activists who are making noise, we know them from Tapang to to the Capo and the rest. They always say that they contribute in the background. Can they tell us how much they have contributed? If you don't, if you don't belong to IG like most of you claim, and you don't talk about my trip to Boya. We can talk about it because we can hold these leaders accountable because we are accountable. Don't bring you thieves, you hide in fake profiles, you come and ask about my trip to Boya. I have asked Dr. Sako, I called Dr. Sako and the rest personally, and I asked them that, what have you put down with this money, with this money, with this money? And they gave account, and I said, it's not satisfactory. It means that you have embezzled money. Dr. Sako, you might not have eaten money, but you've given money to your commanders who have also eaten the money, and that is embezzlement. In that case, let us be clear. We need an accountable treasury. Secretary Tabenyang and the rest. I have, we have proposed in this platform that you should bring in people like Dr. David Makongo and Honorable Weber and other people and then remove people who are very, very controversial. 
If you ask us in private, we'll call their names. And if it is not helping, we're going to ensure that we come in public and say these things that we are saying here. Anything I tell you, it is not a secret. Last one last thing. We call on the interim government to sanction Akwanga, Dr. Akwanga, for kidnapping the priest. I've concluded my investigation and I can authoritatively say that Akwanga kidnapped the Reverend Fathers and took bribe and took ransom. So the government of Southern Cameroon must come out powerfully and condemn this act. Write a strong note and condemn Akwanga for kidnapping a priest. Because we are not, we are not, we are not enemies with the church. We are not enemies with the church. We are not enemies with the church. So if Dr. Sako accepted that Dr. Akwanga took some of the money and came and gave you, if Dr. Sako, if the IG does not do a strong statement to condemn that act and on behalf of Southern Camonians apologize to the church and the Christian community in Moyoka or Munyenge, then it means that the IG is conniving with this criminal and this kidnapper of a man who calls himself Akwanga Ebenezer. I want to be clear with all of you. We will not condone all these leaders who are out there kidnapping because you want to turn the whole church against the poor of Southern Cameroon. Can you fight a war with the army and the church? That's the question. Can you fight the, a war against the army and the church? So Dr. Sako come out powerfully and condemn this act of this, our compatriot. And let him also, if you, Akwanga wants peace, he should come out there and, and go and apologize to the, to the church. To go and apologize to the church. And I hear that he has closed the church like somebody just wrote. And that information was confirmed to me yesterday. Although I'm yet to see it. Some posted that there are videos that the Sokadev has sealed the church. You go and seal a church. You go and seal the church so that you give enough weapon for the government of Cameroon to go to the international community and, and start saying that, yes, uh, uh, you see, we're telling you that we would not kill this priest. These are the poor kidnapping the priest. This is what these people are doing. I don't know. For Akwanga, I cannot say that Akwanga has been compromised. But I can say he's foolish, or he's erratic, or he's verbose. But to say that he has been compromised, I'm not sure. I can't say that. But what he has done, he must apologize to the church. He must apologize to the church. I even hear a, a, a relative of the of the priest called and said that they were threatening the, 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 the priest. Akwanga, you cannot do that. Because if you do that, some of us will take you to court in this USA. You cannot. You have you can arrest a priest, even a pope, in times of war. For whatever reason, when you investigate them, you send them back. You cannot take a priest, you take their money, you come on live show and you bring to admit it and you think that we should condone those, th that kind of nonsense. Dr. Akwanga, this is an appeal from this platform. Open that church, tell whosoever is down there to, 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 to go out of that territory and allow the church to operate and then you refund whatever amount of money you have collected from the priests and you also take care of their medical bills. That is a crime and be ready to go to, 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 to prison for that. I am going to prison for preaching hard I don't care, but I will never kidnap a priest. I will never kidnap a, a, a civilian. I have a war with the army and anybody who cares to betray the revolution. So Akwanga, please, all of you, when you live here, write on your Facebook page, start a campaign for the refund of the money to the priest. We cannot have these people turn our communities against us because this is what they're trying to do. They're trying to ensure that they destroy us so that if we don't succeed, they, they know that they will not succeed, so they don't want us to succeed. So please, come out on social media and ask for the release of to the refund of the money to the priest, the reopening of that church. And the ID should also make a strong statement. Joshua Carr, Mark Barita, Kemi Ashu, all of you, Yannick Sikot. This is a huge challenge for us activists. We cannot have Akwanga behave like advanced in Nigeria, behave like a notorious and a very, very vantage criminal. Kidnapping is not allowed. And these are things that we must condemn. These are things that we must condemn. We are not against the church. We are not against the church. We are not and we will never be against the church. So Dr. Kwanga, go and give back the money. All of you should stand out there, bank his number, or put his number on Facebook. He has to change that number or he, go, he goes there and give the money back to the church. We will not have people kidnapping priests for ransom. If a priest is considered a spy, you can arrest him, investigate him, and detain him indefinitely if you so care. For whatever reason, you will never be charged by the international community because it is war. But to kidnap a priest and ask for money, then we have a serious issue at our hand. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much. Don't forget the 5th of January is the Sekwayoktabe Jilos and Co. Day of Justice. We want to urge everybody in other parts of the, the United States that uh, a protest ground has already been secured at the White House. We're going to put out the flyers. 
and everybody who's in, in, the, in the United States is flying the DMV area, we all have to fly and converge on the White House to ensure that we give Sesoko the maximum support. We want thousands of people to come out for that protest. The same should be done in other parts of the world, in Gabon, in Equatorial Guinea, in the, in the UK, anywhere in Australia, in, Ch in Japan, China, everywhere. So please, let us support our president because the crowd that will come out on the 5th of January will send a stronger signal to Yaoundé as their case will be coming up later in the week. So please, let us come out powerfully. We'll also announce any place and site for the, for the, for the dinner. So far, we have received uh, $225 on the catch-up for Seseko's contribution. That money is going to be sent out there probably to the wife or to whosoever is managing that. But I just take the responsibility to collect it. The accounts are there. We can always show whosoever wants to check, who cares to check. So we want to beg that we have to come out in our numbers to support Seseko, Ayoktabe, Julius, and Kode. That is very important for our revolution. So God bless you all. And before I go, all these frontline leaders who care to call themselves one, you always talk, you never think of our refugees. Look, all of them, from Ayaba, Kwanga, and the rest, Bo Hebert, they will never do anything concerning the refugees. These are people that we must watch out. Like I've said, we will, we will strengthen the IG. I will give the IG all the support that we need in order to empower Seseko in jail. If all of you, all my mommy, my papa, they, everybody, where things say Seseko is a president, now the time is for shame, all these Ayaba children, the way they don't become the gang leaders, and for Mr. Pobi and Atanga and Jipo, all of them will get for stand out the firm, for support Seko, me, Dr. Sako, restructure the IG, bring us a clear platform for contribution, and make sure that they update we with any money where they contribute them, and anything where they do with their money. Me, IG, always put projects out there. I want to buy five sugar cane. Maybe we know. They will no know so they for war, and we need to do anything to ensure that we save our people. No more time for toxic classified. You know, I'm not give my money, I'm not classify, and then you can't tell me to use my money, classify them. I just to stop all that bank tree. I be I go talk them anytime, any day, because we must remain, keep this IG on check for give Seseko all the power we deserve them. So God bless all we our end for here. I've been trying to make this show just an hour, and I think it's exactly an hour. I want to thank all who now want to watch and we're letting know say we go support this IG powerfully any way possible so that we will stop all the people that they get dropped from this revolution. The revolution will not become a full-time job for these people, for the kidnap and do all kinds of things, so we will not accept it anymore. God bless you and trust in us, trust in this platform that will come anytime to speak the truth. Some of this fake providers will go and say Northwest, Southwest divide. But one time, I know, say, I you get Northwest in us, you get Southwest now, not get nothing like divide. Well, we go for Chicago, we're going to have the community for Chicago. Most of the people they'll be receiving for Chicago, now having Northwest in us. So we'll not get any business with any person where if you say if you bring that kind of from Franklin in Jamaica kind of idea, so we'll not get that time for that kind of thing. We'll therefore, yeah, now for defend our IG, and nobody is going to take away the revolution from us. Not you, I have a true because you were 30 years as you claim you have done nothing until today. You still fight for great relevance. That is why you block your Facebook page all on a Kwanga day for 30 years. You don't can't end up the kidnapping and father them. So, not for that kind of put them and may they come any of the way they come. Are they ready for Nana hands for because are you now only branch for apology when I take a smash for down anytime I come for apology? I go accept now one. One heart on a tear of the world will work. If not, we'll continue to support our IG and nobody can change that fact. God bless you and have a Merry Christmas and uh, a very prosperous New Year. We hope that in the course of the week, probably even tomorrow, if something comes up, we'll still come live. God bless you and bye-bye. You can see most of our videos now that inside Moto because we're technical team don't have you say fine for always change our location what we do live video. So anytime I see I'm now that I did and why I see self. While views are only go up because they not get away for track my address again. First time they don't live for one place, they know my address, they know my IP, they, they, they disturb I see 300 people they watch for my get hundreds and thousands and thousands of followers. But then we don't get discussed the strategy. That is why you mostly see us in the car doing this live show or some other kind of location. But they don't know which side they do them because we know say that they do everything for travel to our internet connection and we ensure say they not send notification for our followers and but thank god say our technical team don't give you that idea and so they try to beef up our security they don't try to inter interrupt them today but we'll still try to get on a lot to watch them so god bless you now and stay blessed bye bye